Hey, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while making yourself better every single day. This video is going to be something special because what I'm doing is I'm taking eight plus years of my own financial frustrations and money lessons that I wish I learned sooner and I'm condensing them into one video for you to copy and paste this exact framework into your life. By the end of this video, you'll walk away with everything you need to start getting good with money in your 20s. And if you like the value that you get from this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I know you want to low key. The first step to getting good with your money is to understand exactly where you are with money. This is where I started in my financial journey and I'd like to think this is where everyone's starting point should be because that's what's gonna be what drives all of the other steps that I'm gonna talk about in this video. And I think it's super easy to underestimate how deep and powerful this step is. So I'm gonna go over what this step should look like for you. This is where you take a brutally honest look at yourself in the mirror and you look at everything about your finances. And I want you to look at two things, how much you're making and how much you're saving. So if you really don't know where to start with this, I would say to start there because what that's gonna do is that's gonna open your mind to a ton of different things that you probably haven't thought of. So for me, after I looked at how much I made and how much I was saving, I looked at it and the numbers looked pretty good, but I still had frustration around those numbers because I had other things to worry about like student loan debt, building my credit score and building an emergency fund. And I knew that I was well off compared to my counterparts, but something in the back of my head kept saying I could have been doing better. So maybe you can relate to this, but I felt like my money was moving in slow motion because I felt like I had to wait two weeks for a paycheck only to put a small fraction of that paycheck into my savings account and then put an even smaller fraction of my paycheck into my student loans while the rest of the money went towards bills. It was frustrating because I had other plans. I wanted to be able to send my mom a certain amount of money every single month. And I wanted to live life and I wanted to go places and travel and I couldn't do that. And even though I was making over $65,000 a year when I first got started, and that's a great salary for any 21 year old, I realized that for what I wanted to do, that wasn't enough. So I had to take a deeper look because I figured, sure, I can complain about how little I'm able to put away every single month, but what are my spending habits like? How often do I just blow money for no reason, you know? So that's what I mean. Those are the questions you ask yourself. How are your money habits? What are your biggest pain points around money? And this is something to revisit once a month or so because it's important to look at your progression, you know what I mean? Because your frustrations and money habits are gonna change throughout your life. And here's the key thing that I want you to focus on before I move to the next step. Think deep when you're thinking about your financial habits. Even think about the financial guilt that you might associate with those habits. You'd be surprised at the amount of people that have a ton of financial guilt. And even though they are aware that they have this level of financial guilt, they're still not willing to face the reality. That leads to repeating bad habits over and over again, making the situation worse, which amplifies that guilt even more. And along with that, it can also lower your self-image. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you cannot allow yourself to become discouraged when you're on the path to improving your finances. Because it can easily happen, especially if you're like me and you focus on that one thing, that one financial mistake that you made years ago. Or maybe you even feel like you made the wrong career choice. That's the thing about improving yourself. It's going to expose and highlight your mistakes and your shortcomings. So yeah, you're going to realize you have some holes in your game, bro. You'll realize you made some bad decisions or no one properly prepared you for this. But don't let that stop you from progressing. Instead, take those same frustrations and pain points and use them in the next step. And that's to get crystal clear on your financial goals. So you already understand exactly where you are with your money. So now it's time to take some actionable steps and create goals for yourself. I already made a video breaking down that process. And if you want to watch it, you can catch it up here. But just to give a quick recap and to expand on what I was saying in that video, this is what I personally did. I knew I wasn't just going to set a bunch of goals today and achieve all of them by tomorrow. So instead of setting myself up for disappointment, I set very specific long-term and short-term goals for myself. But they weren't just any old random goals and they actually had time limits assigned them. My biggest frustration with money back then was I simply wanted to make more. So one of the first financial goals I ever had was to figure out how to make more money. They got me into exercising my options like overtime at work, learning how to interview for better, higher paying jobs, going for promotions, and learning how to make more money outside of work. And I also had savings goals and it's actually a funny story. I had this weird idea in my mind. And the idea was once you work really hard to achieve a certain level of success, you can lose everything just like that. Thanos just comes down and snaps all your money away. 
And that can be true, which is why it's important to be humble and careful with your money, especially early on. And there's actually a crazy story I have for you about that. But anyway, I was pretty much paranoid about the idea that any and everything could go wrong at any given time. So I went ahead and set a savings goal to save $20,000 and I gave myself two years to do it. I also had $30,000 of student loan debt, so I set aside a goal to get rid of that as well. As you can see, these aren't like crazy groundbreaking goals. These are just steps that I wanted to take. You know, I, I just saw them as stepping stones that I wanted to accomplish on the way to getting to where I wanted to be financially. You might have a goal right now to stop living paycheck to paycheck, or maybe you want to move out of your parents' house. And by the way, if that's your goal, I have a video for that. You can catch it up here. I think it'll help you out a lot. Or you could have a goal that's simply giving back to your family. You see what I'm saying? Everyone's goals are different. So if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and leave me a comment down below letting me know what your financial goals are. And I know that not all of you are going to feel comfortable with putting your goals down in the comments, and that's fine. But something I would challenge you to do is instead of just thinking about your goals, I would also challenge you to write them down so you can see them. They're a lot less intimidating that way. And I found that once you have all these ideas in your mind and you really start to think about what you want your life to look like and how you really wish things were different, it can start to overwhelm your mind, especially if you don't have them written down and you're only thinking of them. And then you'll start to feel like you'll never get there. But you can get there and it's almost always easier than you think it is. And what makes it easier is by having a plan and sticking to that plan relentlessly 100% without fail. That's how you can consistently hit your goals every single time. This is my favorite analogy to use. It's just like any goal with anything. A lot of you who've been watching me for a while, y'all know I love to hit the gym. And so if someone wants to get in the best shape of their life, they need a plan. Going to the gym five days a week, doing cardio 15 to 30 minutes for two to three days out of that same week, doing lifts and exercises that match their goals for adding strength or muscle or whatever, and having a good diet nine times out of 10 will get them there. And you don't need to be a fitness expert to understand that. Same thing for your goals around money. Like if you want to save $1,000 for the first time ever, and let's say you make pretty decent money, so you give yourself six months max to accomplish that. When you break that down, you can actually reach your goal in five months just by saving $200 a month. But the thing about that is a lot of us aren't disciplined enough to reach those goals because they purely rely on our discipline. Just like my gym analogy that I just talked about. It sounds good. It makes sense. It sounds like it's something easy to stick to until you actually do it. And on top of that discipline, you're going to need consistency. And that's the great thing about money. And that's, you know, you can make your life a lot easier by just doing what I always recommend. And that's to automate your savings. So in this case, you could save $1,000 in five months without really doing anything because you already done automated having $200 go straight into your savings account every single month. And once you do that for a while, you won't even miss that $200 because you'll be used to that $200 going straight into your savings account every month. The next thing you know, you'll look down and you'll see $2,000. That's a super simple example, but as your goals become more ambitious, just make sure your plans match that same energy you're giving your goals. Now, in my opinion, those were the top three steps to start getting good with your money in your 20s, and that's when you're just getting started. I want you to remember these three steps, and next week I'm going to really dive deep into how to become cold with your money with the rest of the tips. I know you're probably thinking this video was just getting good and I was really getting into the details and everything, but I promise you I have some incredible information coming next week that's going to build right on this video. It's going to be extremely valuable. And I'm also going to tell you that crazy story that I was talking about earlier. By the way, the video is going to be titled How to Become Cold with Your Money or something like that. I'll let you guys know. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.